Okay, now we're moving. Now we're really moving. Right? Oh boy. training for our Coast Guard fleet. So he's going to be, play the, the sickest of the casualties today because he's able to role play uh, realistic uh, illnesses and injuries to make realistic training for those that are going to be gone here. So they'll have to get him off those rocks. Yep. So once whoever discovers Mr. Saunders, they'll have to determine the best evacuation plan and that's going to be by water or by air. So what ends up happening because this is the area from point A to point B, we have to understand that the fishing vessel will normally take a track in safe water to get to his home port, but we don't know what the sea conditions and wind conditions will do. It could drift into the west, it could drift into the east. So what we need to do is make sure that we cover enough of the area to allow for the drift. And Labrador has nearly 29,000 kilometers of coastline, and the search and rescue region uh, off the east coast has nearly half a million square nautical miles of ocean. So with the 16 ship fleet, the Canadian Coast Guard cannot be every place every time there's a marine occurrence. That's why we have the Canadian Coast Guard Auxiliary, our official volunteers, and our partner in search and rescue. So in Newfoundland and Labrador alone, we have nearly 1,000 members in the Coast Guard Auxiliary and almost 400 member vessels. Predominantly fishing vessels, uh, these folks will often drop their livelihood, leave their family at home in the wee hours of the morning in the worst of weather conditions, and they'll drop their whatever they're doing to come out to save mariners that are experiencing difficulty on the waters. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the Little Eagle uh, out of Port of Grave. Uh, great asset to the Canadian Coast Guard. We use her quite often for training as well as search and rescue. Very capable vessel and does a lot of good work for us here in Exception Bay. So this is the Canadian Coast Guard Auxiliary Vessel Rocky Islander, which is also engaged in search and rescue effort. In today's scenario, uh, it appears that the Rocky Islander may have passed the first ob search object in the field. So the Canadian Coast Guard and the Royal Canadian Air Force, when we plan for search and rescue missions on the water, we use a software known as the Canadian Search and Rescue Planning Program. And we go for a confidence factor of 100%, which means that basically we want to ensure that any search object is in the area. Number one, we need to be searching in the right area. And number two, we need to be capable of detecting the object. So where the first object was very low to the water, Perhaps it wasn't visible from a surface vessel. That's why we bring in aircraft as well. So we also have the Civil Air Search and Rescue Association aircraft is in the immediate area. And I expect in the next five minutes, uh, they will sight the search object and will vector in the Rocky Islander to uh, recover. That is the volunteers that support the Royal Canadian Air Force. It's the Civil Air Search and Rescue Association, or CASARA Newfoundland. That's one of their amphibious aircraft uh, that volunteers their time as pilots, navigators, and spotters. So that's the Ashton and Cody auxiliary vessel with the Coast Guard. This is just an exercise. The Civil Air Search and Rescue Association aircraft did in fact spot a search object in the water. That information was passed to the Canadian Coast Guard ship Sir William Alexander. 
and they in turn tasked the Coast Guard Auxiliary Vessel Ashton and Cody to return to that location and they're currently alongside that search object in the water now and will affect recovery uh, momentarily. And Labrador very unforgiving year round, so we will never put live casualties in the water. We'll always use rescue dummies, and that's what the Ashton Cody's alongside at this time. How important is it to to get your auxiliary partners out there on the water and doing things like this? 29% of the time in Newfoundland and Labrador, the Canadian Coast Guard Auxiliary is first on the scene of a maritime occurrence. So they are our partners in search and rescue. It's extremely important. It's life-saving, the fact that they are there to support us, so we need to support them through realistic training. The CH-149 Cormoran Search and Rescue Helicopter from 9 Wing Gander, 103 Search and Rescue Squadron, is in a hover over the water, as you can see. So it's no doubt he has discovered the debris field from the accident and is investigating at this time. So the Cormorant is touching down here on the island where we saw the stranded Captain Saunders. He's in there. Okay, Cor Cormoran is with the guy on the beach. And we got the PIW recovered and the debris field has been, has been uh, confirmed. So that's everything. So whenever you search and rescue helicopter from 103 Rescue Squadron has landed uh, in close proximity to the casualty on the rocks. The search and rescue technicians from the aircraft are now on scene and they're assessing the illnesses and injuries of the casualty. And as you can see, the SAR techs are conversing with the aircraft and I guess they are this time developing uh, the treatment plan followed by their extraction plan. probably a check ride for him so they're basically now they're doing some first aid training so pre-hospital emergency care some first aid training so every scenario every time we go on the water every time they fly and work with us it's all about train 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 to gain the maximum value from what they're doing so the search and rescue technicians of the aircraft have evaluated the casualty status and decided it cannot be moved over ground so the aircraft uh, Came airborne again. They're now in a hover, and they're going to extract the casualty via Stokes litter. It's hard to stay steady in the boat. Tech professionals are going up and then they're going to hook, hook in the uh, stranded individual. Hard to stand up. <laughs> 